Hi guys. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and adopted mothers and people that stand in as mothers. We often, um, on Mother's Day, thank the actual people who are, 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 are mothers. And they should be thanked because um, God knows it's one of the hardest jobs ever raising and rearing children. So having mother say to you, but we, but we don't um, often thank the people who stand in for for mothers, like the aunties and the people who take in foster children and uh, uh, all that. So I'd like to give a big thank you to those mothers as well, the stand in mothers, the the people that take in chill the women that take in children who are not their own biologically um, but they love them just as fiercely as if they were so thank you to all those women and to all of you um god's blessings on you um, because it's not easy to raise children. Uh, so I thank you. Uh, and they thank you too. Although we may not say that we do. But we thank you for just the sacrifice of mothering. And the whole um, experience of mothering. I, I haven't had that experience myself. But I've. I've talked to mothers myself, but I have a mother, um, and it is the most challenging, exhausting, wonderful, exhilarating, life lessening, if that's a word, thing on this planet. So thank you to all of you mothers. Um, today I'd like to talk about creating a legacy of prayer. Um, this week, I thought of um, the relationship I have with my own mom. Um, and a few years ago, I started having really bad panic attacks that I would um, wake up at night and uh, um, short, short of breath and just be in panic. So at that time, my mother and I began um, praying together um, every night. And every night she says, uh, the same prayer for me, and it's become like her blessing over me. And thinking about that, and thinking of Mother's Day, I was think I was thinking of um, how creating a legacy of prayer is so important. We often teach our children the. Um, the light prayers, you know, when I was a kid, we used to do gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon the little child. And we teach them the Lord's Prayer. We teach them all of those prayers. And those prayers are good for a start. But we often stop there and don't teach them how to pray to really um, fight off the devil, because I can tell you from being a teenager, although that was a long time ago, and um, being now an adult, um, we as people, we have to fight off some major devils. Devils in our homes, devils in our families, devils in our finances, devils in every area of life. And those little 
gentle Jesus prayers, although nice sounding, they don't really um, get to the heart of defeating the problems. Prayer is just um, communication with God, but it's like, how sophisticated do you want the communication to be? Communication is um, physical and it's physical and it's emotional and it's your body language and it's your your life. What I mean by it's your life, like in your life, using your personality. You have different ways you communicate, and prayer is much the same. We all don't pray the same way, and the Lord doesn't expect us to. But what we have to do now is create a legacy of prayer, which means we need to create um, a space where our children our families, our homes feel comfortable with prayer. A lot of people don't feel comfortable praying. They fi- they find it daunting and they find it very, um, very hard to pray because they think they have to pray um, a, a certain way, but Prayer is simply communication, and it's up to you how in-depth that communication goes. And when it comes to your children, the best way to create a legacy of prayer is to actually model prayer, not teach prayer, not teach them uh scriptures to say necessarily but although that is a start but it's more effective if they see you pray and then they jump into prayer so what i would do um is when you're praying calls them in to watch you pray and don't water down the way you pray for for them to understand pray the way that you always pray using the adult words and and whatever because although they may not understand what you're saying they'll get the spirit of what you're saying and then when it comes time for them to pray um and then after when it comes time for them to pray they'll get the spirit of what you were doing and leave leave room for them to ask questions i'm not i'm not doing this sermon as a parent because i'm not a parent but i'm doing this sermon as a child as a child what I wished my parents would have done when I was a child. I had great parents, a great mom, a great dad. They taught me about Jesus. But one thing about my parents, um, um, prayer was not an everyday thing in our household. It was a, it was a Sunday thing, although I love my parents. I love the way they raised me. But I just wish it had become a Sunday thing. And I just wish because of the devils that I had to fight, um, they would have modeled for me how to pray and how to seek the Lord. And they did, but I just wish it would have been more... um, 
uh, pronounce, uh, not pronounce, I don't even know the words. Um, I, um, so that when I got older, I would know how to pray to fight the devils that I had to fight. And I would have, and I don't think I would have got, gone through what I do, did if they had the tools to know how to teach me how to pray. Um, and that's why I'm doing this sermon. I'm, I'm speaking not as a parent, because um, God knows I'm not one, but I'm speaking as a child who didn't get that message about prayer really when I was a child. Um, when I was a child, we would wake up on Sunday morning and have family prayer. But later in life, that didn't, that didn't hold me, that didn't teach me anything. So I'm doing this sermon for parents to not so much teach teach their children um, little prayers like our father like you, you can teach your children that to get to to get them in the mood to pray um, to to develop in them a basis to pray but don't stop there and modeling is the most important thing about prayer so don't worry when you call them in to the room about shrinking your prayers down to stuff they can understand. They'll get the spirit of, of prayer and then leave it open for them to ask questions about prayer, and how to pray, and how to develop that relationship with God and prayer and prayer like any form of communication uh, takes work it takes time it takes a relationship with God it takes an understanding of how God communicates with you and how he works with you and how he rolls with you a lot of people feel guilty um, because they can't pray like Oh Jesus, we come to you today. They can, they don't know how to uh, speak in tongues or connect with God like that. But listen, God doesn't want you to connect with Him like that. God just wants you to talk with Him the way you would talk with your m mother or father, and you will develop a language of prayer all your own. And I'm not talking about tongues necessarily. I'm talking about a speech, a vocabulary of prayer on your own. It takes time and communication. And what relationship, in what human relationship do you think communication just happens. You have to work on it. You have to work on communication with your children, communication with your spouse, communication with your family. Every relationship takes work, including the one with God. And if prayer um, is communication, it takes work as well. So don't um, feel any obligation of time to pray of words to use and mimicking your pastor or whatever. No. Be yourself in prayer. And if oh and if you can only start with like a minute just telling him what's on your mind. That's all he wants to know. And you'd be surprised how your language of prayer will build up and that in turn will 
um, start your legacy of prayer. Um, I think a lot of people just get so bogged down with, oh, do I pray this way? Do I pray that way? Do I do this? Do I do that? And there are so many books on prayer. It can get very, um, you can get very bogged down, but all you have to do is be yourself in prayer. Talk the way you talk. And you will develop a prayer vocabulary of different ways to pray and different um, different avenues to pray and different ways to pray. You'll develop all that, but it's you have to start somewhere. And I'm saying just start anywhere. So do what you can, and, and you'd be surprised at praying for two minutes in a few weeks, if you do it consistently, will develop uh, into praying for two hours in no time, and you, and you won't even feel weird. And expect to, when you first start praying, expect to feel a little a little weird a little strange because uh, you're not talking to anyone in the room but as you do it more and more that weirdness will just go and you'll you'll be like pro probably you'll you'll feel like this is the way it was for me. I felt like um, that I couldn't wait to pray. I prayed everywhere and you will begin to feel comfortable praying, praying everywhere and anywhere and out loud or, or in your mind or, or wherever and however, because God can hear your thoughts as well. So even if you even if you pray inside your heart, he can still hear you. There's been times in my life where um, I've been going through a serious situation and right in that moment I I just say in my mind, I just start praying in my mind and um, talking to God in my mind saying, Lord, help me with this situation. Or there is sometimes where um, there's an, I walk into a place and there's an atmosphere in a place that is not right and I can feel it. So in my mind, I'm like, Lord, calm this atmosphere. Lord, bring peace to this atmosphere. And I'm just walking around and my lips are moving, but I'm still praying in my heart. And God, God hears those prayers too. And going back to creating a legacy for your children. Um, when you begin to pray, your children will begin to feel a difference. Maybe the strain in your life, the strain in your home, the strain in your relationship is due to a lack of prayerlessness. Uh, no, to a lack of prayer is due to prayerlessness. Um, when you pray, it opens up not only the avenues of heaven, but it can 
open up the avenues of communication with you and your children, you and your spouse. I remember um, this, there's this movie, this wonderful movie that came out a few years ago uh, called War Room. And in this movie, um, Priscilla Shire's character had a daughter and when she began uh, to write down her prayers and um, go in her um, prayer closet and pray, her daughter saw that and it changed her whole family situation. And I remember this scene very well. She went into her closet to pray because by this time, she had been praying forever. Um, she had been praying for quite a long time. And she saw on the wall not only her prayer request, but her daughter had, um, had put her prayer request down too. And so it wasn't even seen. It was felt. Her daughter felt a change in her parents' marriage, her daughter felt a change in their home. It was less combative. It was less um, tense. So, so in that movie, her daughter started her own prayer list. Um, and Elevation Worship in Maverick City, um, on their church base, old church basement album, has a song uh, called Talking to Jesus. And it starts off with a uh, uh, pastor recalling his, uh, the relationship that his grandmother had talking to Jesus and how his mother used to drag him to church on Wednesday night and how his mother and grandmother used to pray, and it ends with him talking to Jesus and inviting his son to do the same thing. So if you create a legacy of prayer, that will be the most important gift you can give your children. That will be the most important thing you can give your children. Not that they can't learn it later in life, but it's easier if they can learn it um, uh, when they're little. So don't, don't just do it on Sundays when you think this is the Lord's Day, let's do it. Create a legacy of prayer where you do it every day. Create a time to pray with and for your children every day. Create, create a space where they feel free to pray in their own way to their own God. And, and create, create a space where questions about prayer are accepted and conversation about prayer is encouraged because if you open up about prayer your children will thank you later and when they come come against those demons in their life and in their school they'll know how to attack them they'll know how to pray because they've gotten that at home and um, they'll know how to talk to Jesus and it will become a legacy in their home. And don't wait for a catastrophe to start your children praying. Pray when your life is going well, pray when it's not going well and teach your children to pray when it is going well, when it's not going well. Cause you can't watch your children all the time, but God can watch your children all the time. And if they can develop 
a language early to talk to God. It will it will change their life life. And you'll say, Oh my children are too, too young to listen to me pray like that. They need uh they they need it in their own way. Uh your children can listen to a a Beyonce song and memorize all the world words. Your five and ten year ten year old can do that and they can't uh they can't pray the way you do? Of course they can. And they're just waiting for you to show them how. Because parents, I can tell you as a teenager, and it's worse for them now than it ever was for me as a teenager. Your children, your 10-year-old, your 5-year-old, they're fighting some devils at school they're fighting depression, they're fighting suicidal thoughts, and the only way to combat that is a relationship with God, is, is uh, teaching them how to pray, giving them space to pray, giving them space to develop their relationship with God. That's the only way to combat all all the dark thoughts that they have. So no, don't only pray for them. Pray with them and encourage them to pray um, for you or for their family, for their home. Encourage them to pray about what concerns them, even if it may seem stupid, because to you, because what that does is create a culture of prayer in their lives. And when the foundation of prayer is created in their life, it will change their life in innumerable ways, in remarkable ways. And, and they will just thank you so much because there is nothing that can defeat the devil more, that can defeat low self-esteem more, that can defeat suicide more than prayer. Prayer opens up portals. Prayer opens up mind. Prayer opens up communication. Prayer, prayer allows God to, God to move. God doesn't need your permission to move. It's his grace and his and his kindness that he's created a way that we can uh, he's gentlemanly enough to wait for our prayers because God in most of the time will not invade your life until you pray. He knows what's going on in your life, but he wants his children to ask him. He wants his children to ask him to work on their behalf. And he, he's saying, keep knocking. If you don't hear an answer, keep knocking. I had a family member um, who who didn't come to the Lord until after um, the person that was praying for him for years died. So it's never, it's never a good idea to stop praying. Keep knocking, keep knocking. And um, I was thinking of the scripture in Deuteronomy 6 where it says, Talk to your children um, in the morning and in the evening. Write this upon the door of your heart. And it talks about, um, talk about the goodness of God and talk about what he's done for your family and tell stories 
about what he's done for your family in prayer. If God did something remarkable for your family in prayer, even before your children were born, tell them so that they know the goodness of God depending on the age of the child. You can decide how much of the story you tell. But they need to know about the faithfulness and goodness of God. Not from Bible stories, although those are great, but the greatest stories that they can hear are your stories. The stories how God delivered you and, and their mom or you and, and their dad or even them. They need to hear those stories of how prayer changed your family and how prayer changed your life. So create a culture of prayer and to create a legacy of prayer. And the greatest way to create a legacy of prayer, again, is modeling. Modeling it for your children. So that they know um, how to develop a relationship with God. So that they know that they can come to him with everything that they have. With every little concern. And, what, and when they start to pray, their concerns may not seem like a big deal to you. But it will create a foundation so that when they're a teenager, um, they will come to the Lord with, with all those self-esteem issues. So when other kids are struggling with self-esteem issues and all that, they'll know where to take it. They won't have to do drugs or drink or do anything do anything like that because they don't know where to where to take it and, and they all know um because of the culture that you created that prayer will change things and god can intervene in your in their lives without you knowing knowing it and they'll develop their own stories their own testimonies because of the legacy that you've created when they were little and when they were t teenagers. And it's never too l late or early to start creating a legacy of prayer. If you missed it when they were, when they were young, you can start when they're teenagers. And a lot of people say, well, once they're teenagers, that's it. But no, you can st st still start creating a legacy of prayer. You maybe can't invite them into a room, but you can pray so much that it changes the atmosphere in your home. So, And one day, they'll ask you, um what they may ask you what is going on i feel something different and then you can explain to them i've been praying for you and for for those of you who have wayward children who have ch children that have just gone off the path keep praying for them keep praying for them and don't call uh, for what you see in them. Call, no, don't call forth what you are, what they are. Call forth what you see. No, don't call forth what you see. Call forth who they are. That's it. Don't call forth what you see, but call forth who, who they are. So you might see a teenager that's drinking and doing drugs, 
But instead of focusing on that, just just say, you're a king, you're a queen, you're a priest. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that you will start acting like it. You will act like it. You will be on stages declaring the goodness of God. You you will create a generation who will that will serve the Lord. You will stop sleeping with every man and create a generation that will serve the Lord. So if you call forth uh, who they are and not what you see, they will slowly um, become that because of years of prayer and creating a legacy of prayer. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll pray for you. Father, I pray that this word permeated every heart, every spirit, every soul. Lord God, I pray that you um, just use this word to send forth change in the computer waves, God. Every heart, every spirit, every soul, Lord God. I pray that that through that through me you said something to touch everyone that is listening, that will listen, that has listened uh, to this sermon. Father, I pray that you bless every mother, Lord God, every mother that has sacrificed. And I pray, I declare that they will not give up on that son and that daughter because that son and that daughter is a king and a queen in your eyes, God. And I pray that that son and that daughter will come out as pure gold. They will serve you. And I declare that each parent will say today, as for me and my house will serve the Lord. God, I declare that you are God of every household listening to me today. I declare that you will be in every circumstance, solve every problem, give wisdom where there needs to be wisdom, Lord God. Give innovation where there needs to be innovation. Give help where there needs to be help. Whatever they need, Lord God, just be with them in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. I'll see you later. God is able to do just what he said he would do. 
He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able exceedingly, abundantly, above all. All you can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in you. And you, oh God, is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. And I feel in my spirit just as I'm about to sign off. Uh, sometimes the Lord will do this just as I'm about to close. He will give me a word for someone. He's saying there's someone who's been praying for something for a really long time. I don't know. Whether it's a son or daughter, I don't know. Whether it is a relationship or what it is. And you're about to give up. But the Lord is saying now, don't give up. Keep praying. Because he's heard you. And help is on the way. Help is there. He's saying, help is not only on the way. Help is there. Look around you. Your help is just an ask away. Your help is just an ask away. Not not an ask from God, but an ask from your friend. Right now, he's revealing to you who has the answer to your prayer. Because oftentimes God will work work through people and we're asking God we need an answer but he's saying your answer is just an ask away so who do you need to ask for your answer who who is God placing you in your spirit right now that has the answer to what you need there is somebody to answer what you've been praying for, to be God's tools, um, to bless you for to what you've been praying for. He says, stop. Pr-. He says, keep praying, but at the same time, stop praying and just ask. Ask. He said, sometimes you ask. You have not because you ask not. And sometimes your prayer has to be uh, divinely answered. It's something only God can do. But most times it's something that God will use people to help you do. So who's around you that has your answer? That's what he wanted me to ask. There's somebody around you in your circle that has your answer. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bye. Oh, 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 he's able. Oh, oh. Bye, guys.